Or would you like to? As you can see, I walk with a peculiar gait. Actually, I just wanted to make a grand entrance. After all, I have a lot hinging on this evening. I didn't want to lead you down the garden path. It's time to hear some music. Problem is, I'm completely deaf. Never thought I'd hear myself say that. I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. I am here to have fun, to celebrate my, my birthday in a special sort of way um, with lots of special people. And so, before I get into it too far, I want to thank the people who are helping me out. I could not have done it, uh, even down to my, my landlord, and, well, landlords, who helped me out dramatically, uh, being able to be here this evening. Um, two thumbs up, you guys. Uh, in the back, uh, Shirley Souter is helping us with the, uh, the merchandise table, and uh, I don't know what I would do without her. And then on camera, we have Gary uh, Narwaki, who is our, our pastor of our church, and Lisa Narwaki, who's doing the PowerPoint tonight. Hey, Lise. And then on sound, we have Jeremy Barnhart, a very dear friend of mine. Um, poor Jeremy. When he and I met, uh, he was really into music and that kind of thing, but he didn't know a lot about the classics, the poor guy. And so I took him out to the ballet. And we were sitting together, and he was watching all the girls dancing around on their tiptoes. And he leans over to me and he says, Why don't they just get taller girls? <laughs> <laughs> and then also, another person without whom this, this whole event would be almost nothing Candace Stacco on piano. She's fantastic. So, my next piece is called Subtraction. Take it away. <laughs> Usually it takes people a couple of seconds to that one.
So in this next section of pieces, I'm going to be playing, well, hello, pardon me, going to be playing some music written by Camille Saint-Saëns, way, way back before I was born, 19, 1820s, something like that, long time ago. Uh, and uh, this is called The Carnival of the Animals, and he, what he was doing is he was using different instruments to demonstrate different animals, and, and it was, he wrote it for a party, and, and uh, and uh, it, it was just fun little cute pieces. And uh, it's become popular since about the 1940s for poets, like myself, to write poetry to go along with this music. And so I wrote poetry to go along with this music. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to play three of the pieces from uh, Saint-Saëns, the, uh, the Carnival of the Animals, and then I'm going to recite the poems that I wrote to accompany them. So okay, we're going to start with the tortoise. Incidentally, before we get into the, be playing this, the, the music for the tortoise, Saint-Saëns wanted to demonstrate that the tortoise is a slow animal. Well, how do you do that? You can't just play a slow melody because that doesn't necessarily demonstrate that a certain animal is slow. So what he did is he took a famous melody that was usually played very fast and very high, usually by the violins, the flutes, and that type of thing, and he made it very, very low and very, very slow and gave it to the double basses and the cellos. I think you will recognize the tune once I get into it. stage assistance this evening. She's going to help me as I do the, the set song poem. So. so she's going to be my bass stand. <laughs> so this is The Tortoise by A.J. Mittendorf. With careful 
cautious. Slogging steps, the tortoise made his way down Summit Hill to the water hole. The hare would not delay. Wanna reach, wanna reach, wanna reach? Yes, here, while hopping to and fro. Come on, I'll reach with both my shut. The tortoise answered, mm, no. And so the hare ran on ahead and vanished behind a knoll. The tortoise heard him shriek in pain, a distance from his goal. At length, the tortoise passed that knoll and met a cheetah there, reposed in picking from his teeth the remnants of the hare. A lovely day, the cheetah said. My name is Nebit, friend. Eugene, he answered, plodding on, not wanting to offend. Of course, Eugene, you understand that had I not just fed, right now you would already be this cheetah's daily bread. Indeed, Eugene said, marching on, and Neville added, though with you there's not a lot of challenge. The fact is, you're too slow. Yes. Eugene broke off his hike to speak. It's even as you said. If I had been a challenge to you, I'd be already dead. Consider now our friend, the hare, and while it may seem crass, despite his speed, what's left of him is little more than gas. I've been called slow in every tongue since times that we call ancient. It's time creation understands. I am not slow. I'm patient. I will never sing that song again as long as I live the, 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 the waiting one. Can't remember the name of that comedian, but boy. But that, I mean, when the material's there, you use it, right? The next one is the elephant. Inspired by the middle part of the music, where you heard the da di da da di da da bum. That's where the uh, inspiration for the music came from, or for the poem came from. And uh, so this is the elephant by A. J. Mittendorf. Tuscany was <laughs> no ordinary elephant. 
but an ancient, giant, hurly-burly elephant. He had two enormous tusks that started right out here and curled around to distant points way far over there. For an elephant, he stood distinguished, proud and grand. No beast dared to challenge his authority on land. Even so, this lordly elephant was kind and gentle. Often was this quiet heart considered monumental. <laughs> Other times, less frequent times, he thought himself almighty, marching through the grassy fields so as not to be taken lightly. <laughs> one such day as this when he was trying to enchant with his strength and stature, one of many a Sheila fans, he, with all the shaking of the ground that he could muster, and sun shining on his tusks to flash his lofty luster, marched himself right through his herd, shook his awesome head, flapped his giant ears, stretched his massive trunk, and said, Licking grass, the juicy leaves, the finest from this tree. It's the tallest of the savannah, as far as I can see. Hmm? All the finest things around are growing at the top. You can share a meal with me. Just watch the branches drop. From where he alone could reach, he plucked a branch of green. The lady stood and pulled up grass as if they hadn't seen. Well, Tuscany he marveled that the others didn't jump. Well, he'd have to look for branches even higher and more plump. Reaching up his trunk again, standing tippy-toe, pushing forth with all his might as high as he could go, huh, he yelled, success at last. Look, ladies, what I've done. No one looked impressed but turned away one by one. Then a cow, who knew him well, shook her head and sighed. <sighs> I enjoy him so much more, she started to confide, when uh, he loves himself much less and loves his herd instead. Even giant hearts like his are easily misled. Hmm. Either they are filled with self with room for not one more, or they're packed with pachyderms to honor and adore. When he saw that no one cared, Tuscanini slumped down the hill into the pond, both angry and most stumped. Who? What's their problem? Why are they all acting like a turd? Don't they know that everything I do is for the herd? I'm the one who makes stand century. They should all respect me more. It me, it's me who wears the crown. As he sat and washed his face and hosed his body down, no great insight changed his heart. But he'll soon come around. Once he understands it all, I most surely bet he will practice all he learns and never shall forget. Thank you. That um, story about the elephant trying to impress a girl reminds me of oh, one of my first dates. I prepared for her candlelight dinner. So everything was really undercooked. <laughs> the next one is The Swan. You will recognize this tune. Most people have heard it. It was written originally for cello and uh, two pianos. Um, but Candace only has two hands, so I I uh, got rid of one of the pianos for her. I'm losing my speaker here.
Doesn't she make a great stand? <laughs> this is the swan. A swan sailed sadly on the lake. He watched his image in the wake of every tiny tear that rolled and dropped. They used to call me Ugly Duckling, he recollected, almost chuckling. But even in my elegance, I splopped. I wish that I could go ashore and walk around in a quick explorer without the others giggling at the sight. When I'm on land, I have deduced, I waddle like I've just been goosed. Or like I wear my underwear too tight. But even elephants on land, on all fours even, seem so grand as to inspire fear for just their size. And when they want to, on a whim, those beasts can even take a swim and steal across them, washing off the flies. As he swam, engrossed in thought, on shore a little boy called out, Mom, see? A silver swan swims on the tide. He looks to me like skaters do when they go skating on the blue. They fold their hands behind them as they glide. How lovely, how serene he seems. How aristocratically he beams. Please, Mama, can I keep him for a pet? I promise I'll take care of him. I'll, I'll take him for a daily swim, clean every mess he makes, and not forget. I cross my heart, I'll never lie, or or, or wash my face with fresh cow pie. His mom made no excuse, but answered, Ah, oh, no! Ah, oh, think how all my friends would fawn if I came home with a new pet swan. I'd have the greatest pet of all to show. The swan, though, never raised his chin to look around or listen in, but if he had, it might have changed his heart to hear his praises from a boy who took such beauty in with joy, who fancied himself viewing living art. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. A plus for you. <laughs> Actually, I was given a very special request this evening, but I'm going to sing anyway. Something new, then people yell for more. 
and he would sock it to them night after night. He would give them his all and every two-step strutters fall. La 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 la. Hey, Mr. Joplin, we're singing your song. La 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 la. And we're happy to say it's going strong. La 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 la. Today the shag and the Charleston are gone. So's the varsity drag, but like the Binkley Frag, the entertainer goes on and goes on. Yes, we'll sing it again, we'll sing it over again, and we'll be singing it any time strong. So, just a second here. Let me set some grace down. That's my uh, my friend, not my girlfriend though. She um, she has a bow. <laughs> Live for the laughter. These jokes cost me a lot of money. <laughs> okay, Robert W. Service. Canadian poet, uh, late 1800s, I believe. I actually don't know his, his actual years. Um, but he had a real gift for capturing the essence of that area of the world that he lived in, which was um, the Yukon and, and uh, the northern provinces and territories. Anyway. So this is the cremation of Sam McGee. There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake LaBarge. I cremated Sam McGee. Now, Sam McGee was from Tennessee with a cotton blooms and blows. Why he left his home in the south to roam around the pole, God only knows. He was always cold, but the land of gold seemed to hold him like a stair. Though he'd often say in his homely way that he'd sooner live in hell. On a Christmas day, we were mushing our way over the Dawson Trail. Talk of your cold. Through the park is full that stabbed like a driven nail. If our eyes we closed and the lashes froze, till sometimes we couldn't really see. It wasn't much fun. But the only one to whimper was Sam McGee. And that very night, as we lay packed tight in our robes beneath the snow, and the dogs were fed, and the stars were head were dance and heel and toe. He turns to me and, Cap, says he, I'll cash in this trip, I guess. And if I do, I'm asking that you won't refuse my last request. Well, he seemed so low, I couldn't say no. Then he adds with a sort of moan, It's this cursed cold, and it's got Right hold till I'm chilled, clean through to the bone. Yet, take being dead. It's my awful dread of the icy grave that pains. So I want you to swear that, foul or fair, you cremate my last remains. But a pal's last need is a thing to heed. So I swore I would not fail. And we started on at the streak of dawn. He crouched on a sleigh and he raved all day of his home in Tennessee. And before nightfall, a corpse was all that was left of Sam McGee. There wasn't a breath in that land of death, so I hurried, horror driven, with the corpse half hid that I couldn't get rid because of a promise given. It was lashed to the sleigh and it seemed to say, 
You may tax your brawn and brains, but you promise true. And it's up to you to cremate these last remains. The promise made is a debt unpaid, and the trail is its own staring cold. In the days to come, though my lips were dumb in my heart, how I cursed that load. In the long, long night by the lone firelight, the huskies round in a ring howled out their woes to the homeless snows. Oh God, how I loathed the thing. And every day that quiet clay seemed a heavy and heavier grow. But on I went, though the dogs were spent, the grub was getting low. The trail was bad and I felt half mad, but I swore I would not give in. So I'd up and sing to the hateful thing, and did hard with a grin. Till I came to the marge, I laid to the barge, and a derelict there lay. It was jammed in the ice, and I saw in a trice it was called the Alice May. But I looked at it, and I thought a bit, and it looked at me frozen chum. Then, here, said I with a sudden cry, is me crematorium. Some planks I tore from the cabin floor and I lit the boiler fire. Some coal I found that was lying around and I heaped the fuel higher. The flames just soared and the furnace roared. Such a blaze you seldom see. Then I burrowed a hole in the glowing coal and I stuffed in Sam and he. Then I lied, for I didn't like to hear it. Sizzle's soul. And the heavens scowled. And the huskies howled. And the wind began to blow. It was icy cold, but the hot sweat rolled on my cheek, and I don't know why. And the greasy smoke and the inky cloak went streaking down the sky. I do not know how long in the snow I wrestled with grisly fear. But the stars came out and danced about her again and ventured near. I was sick with dread, but I gravely said, I'll just take a peep inside. I guess he's cooked and it's time I looked. And the door I opened wide. And there sat Sam, looking He wore a smile, you could see a mile, and he said, Please close that door. It's fine here, but I greatly fear you'll end in the cold and storm. Since I left Plum Tree down in Tennessee, it's the first time I've been warm. There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails and their secret tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights had seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the margin of the barge. I created Sam McGee. Thank you. We're going to take 10 or 15 minutes. Restrooms out that way, restrooms out that way, merchandise back that way. Not that there's any connection between those three. <laughs>